Hello everyone, this is Johnny Boy from Johnny Boy Fishing. Today, I'd like to dedicate this video to the people that want to take a crack at blackfish, aka tog, tall tog. They call them blackfish in this area, so I'll refer to them as blackfish. This is one of the reasons why blackfishing is difficult. You get snagged and you lose a rig or two, or ten. So bring extra hooks and sinkers because you're definitely going to need it. And don't go too fancy on the hooks and sinkers because I know they sell a six pack of hooks for like four dollars and that's just way too much. Buy them your own, buy them loose, and tie them up yourselves. Tie them up the night before, you'll have them in advance for the day you go fishing. And I call it pocket rigging because you have the hooks and sinkers in your pocket and it doesn't take more than 10 seconds to rig up. So the fishing Small one. blackfish, they have different types of bites, varying hits. Um, the fish on the smaller side, the 10 to 14 inch fish, they have this machine gun hit. It's like a da -da 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 -da. Most of the times, I'm not going to catch that fish because they're just messing around my bait. Especially with me having a bigger hook than most people use. Uh, the bigger fish, 16, 18 plus fish, they have this extreme hit. Uh, I'll go in details on that hit. Today I'm using green crabs. I've been using green crabs for blackfish all my life. Uh, you can use blue crab, mole crab, any crustacean, any shellfish, but green crab is my go-to bait. So I have a, I don't know, it's a, an average size green crab, and I cut it in half and I, I cut the legs off. They call it dressing it. You want to get as much as away as possible so the blackfish can get to it. I am using a 3 uh J hook. Don't use a circle hook. Never use a circle hook for this fishing. Just a J hook. And I have a 2 ounce sinker on. So I go in one socket. I don't know if you can see this. So I go in one leg socket, preferably the claw socket, and out the back leg socket. So when you're holding the, the eye of the hook up, you should see the crab horizontally on the hook. And Make sure you bring an assortment of weights, especially in sizes, because um, the current is definitely going to vary day, you know, day after day. It depends on the the moon. So if the current's ripping, you know, you got to go a little bit heavier. I'm using two ounce. I always carry two or three ounce sinkers in my pocket, in my uh, bag. So if I have to, you know, adjust to the current, I'll I'll use a three ounce. If Current's okay. I use a two ounce. So you definitely need to make sure your bait isn't moving as much as it should be. So let's talk about you know what I'm looking for when I go for blackfish. So in this clip right here, you know it's it's beautiful. The conditions are pristine. Lake Atlantic right here. So what I I do something called mind mapping and I don't think anybody has used the term mind mapping except me so trademark so I mind map the water the waters down there I find structure down there where I can't see and the way I find it and the way I you know determine you know, you know what type of structures down there is I use my weight I throw out to the area I throw out a little bit farther out and I, I just you know I, I pull in a little bit, I slowly reel in until I feel, you know, my weight hitting structure. My, if the weight's hitting the structure, I know I'm, I'm on structure and I know I'm in the area that can potentially hold blackfish. But not all rocks hold blackfish. Not all structure hold blackfish. And uh, I don't know why, blackfish, they do favor certain rocks. Um, I had times where, you know, I've been fishing this particular spot for five years and I, Never in my life had a hit in this one spot, but if I move 10 feet down, maybe two rocks away from the, the, the dead zone, I get hit constantly. So that's blackfish favoring certain type of rocks. You just have to find the blackfish. If you find one blackfish, if you get a hit, definitely fish in that area. You're definitely going to have at least one blackfish hiding in that structure. If you're not getting anything, then you got to move. Period.
So, let me talk about the big fish hit. Because this was a good example of it. Um, you can see, I'm trying, I'm throwing at this one particular spot because for some reason when I'm throwing there, I'm getting hits right away. If I throw two feet to the left, two feet to the right of it, I'm not going to get the hit. So I really, really want to get this spot, you know, throw dead on to the spot where I'm getting the hit right away. So if you're not getting a hit right away, move a little bit. Move two feet down. Throw two feet away from where you previously threw. And maybe get a hit. You just have to find them. You just have to be there and work your way. Every, you know, every single rock that you can potentially get to. And this was a prime example of the big fish hit. If you rewind this, you know, this, this clip right here, you can see it's a double tap. It's a boom, boom. And you can see the weight just nudging the rod tip. That's where I definitely set the hook, planted the hook inside his jaw perfectly as I can. And, you know, that fish was never going to spit the hook. Only way I was going to lose that fish was if my line broke. And that's another thing you have to be very wary about. Um, line chafings, uh, they cost me a lot of fish over the years. So I'm really keen on looking at my line every two or three fish or every two or three snags. You know, you cut away the line that's no good because, you know, a chafed up line can cost you a really big fish. And I didn't want to lose a big fish like this. This fish was 20 inches. It was a little bit over 5 pounds. It was probably, it's the biggest of my 24, 2014 season. And here is still photo. It's a beautiful fish. I'm happy to catch that. Okay. I am using a 6 foot 6 medium heavy action rod. I don't want to go too, he too long because... Seriously, the longer the rod is, the less control you have over the rig. So the short, you know, six foot, six, seven footers, they're, they're perfect. So I, I can control, I can pinpoint where I want to throw at in order to get the, the hit that I'm constantly getting, you know, at this cer certain particular spot. That's my rig right there. That's my go-to rig. If I don't have that rig, I'll just use a standard, you know, high-low rig. That's it. That's a trolling sinker. They call it a torpedo sinker. It's easy to put on, you know, you thread it into your main line and then, you know, you put in your the hook that you tied, hopefully tied on your own. You know, it should really be like an inline sinker rig style. I'm using a pen SSG850, 850. I think it's a pen SSG, I'm not sure, or SSM. I'll look into that a little bit, you know, later on. Definitely a great fishing, great fishery to be fishing, but you know, the stocks are a little bit low, so it's taking a big dent and big hit, big impact. So I don't, I don't know how long this fishery is gonna, is gonna last, but I always do my best to make sure there's fish down there for every single one of us to catch. I hope you enjoyed this fishing. Uh, I'm not a professional of some sort, so. I don't proclaim myself to be good, but I know what I'm doing, and I hope you learn. And I hope you, I hope you did learn from this video. You know, if you want to give it a shot, give black fishing a shot. This is a video to to be watching. Watch this on your own. Watch it one time, listen, and then watch it again without the volume. Here's a five pound, twenty one inch fish, and here's the my personal best 24 inch eight and a half pounds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.